What's up everybody? Like every new game you try, you make mistakes. It's gonna happen. I usually am the guinea pig for the people I play with because I try numerous new games. Idle Survivors is no different. I made mistakes. These are the three most crucial mistakes I feel you should try to avoid. Let's get it. Coming in at number one, we have the Interstellar Summons event. So usually this is gonna be at the top left of your screen right here. Currently there is one ongoing right now. Now the mistake I made, and I don't want you to make, is not going for two hero copies minimum. As I say this, if we go to the current ongoing one right here for the new hero, Eagle of Perdition, I haven't even summoned outside the one free a day. The reason being is I am a low spender, I cannot keep up with the rate they release new heroes, so I need to pick and choose as many of the players in this game need to do as well. I look over their skill kit and decide initially if I think they will be an asset to my team. Currently, I don't really need any more DPS at this very moment. I need a frontliner, so I'm gonna skip on this hero. Then there's also the gotcha luck aspect. Going for two hero copies minimum isn't easy, but I recommend doing this because you only need two total copies to take a hero to eight stars. So when we go over here to a hero, let's see if I have one at eight stars. Uh, right here, so I have the reformed tyrant at eight stars. Now, eight stars is a solid base for testing a hero and having the hero viable to use in your desired content. If I use heroes below eight stars, they're just gonna die super fast. They don't get a lot of the ascension stats that you get. You also don't have many of their skills upgraded. As you can see, you got level two and level three. They're just not gonna be viable for the current content. The regular faction heroes like the Bounty Association, the City Alliance, and the Empire Legion, heroes all have a guaranteed pity after 100 summons. As you can see, I still need to do 96 more summons to guarantee the hero copy. If you pull that hero before the pity, this pity resets. This is a crap load of summons. I've asked them to reduce this pity to at the very least 80, but I have yet to see any change to this. And if you're referring to the rare faction like Awakener or Reconstructor, this guaranteed pity goes from 100 to 120. It's pretty ridiculous. I'd rather see 80 and 100 hero pities if you saw my Holy Bishop summons video thumbnail right here, you'll know I broke it down and if only using diamonds at 9,000 a day, you're gonna need 63,000 diamonds total for the entire event duration. If you're going for the two minimum hero copies and you're not spending money, you can also factor in if you go over to the events tab and then you go into the uh, interstellar one, you can see right here if you click on this part, on day four, you're gonna get 25 hero shards of that given hero. Uh, as you can see right there, if I can scroll down a little bit, you can see right there 25 hero shards. So you can take this into consideration as you're only gonna need another 25 to make a hero copy. For 100 summons with only diamonds, you're going to need 45,000 total. Because you're gonna do 9k a day, which gives you 20 summons, so that is how I came to that number. If you are incredibly unlucky like I have been with this game so far, I have had some good luck, but mostly it's been bad luck. I would say to be safe, you would need at least those 45,000 diamonds each interstellar for two hero copies. You can obviously get lucky with an early copy, lots of hero shards in your 10 pulls, etc. But what I'm saying is if you think the new hero can be of help for your team, go for at least two hero copies, then stop unless you have a lot of resources or money to spend. Mistake number two is gonna be upgrading any heroes. What I mean by this is I'm specifically referring to ascending with gene potions. Gene potions are your biggest bottleneck in this game hands down. You can save up diamonds, you can summon for double S or triple S heroes, you can upgrade your vehicle, but gene potions, which are these things right here, if I go to my bag, uh, gene potions are, where are they, right here. These are gene potions, not having a lot of these will stop you from ascending your heroes to the next tier of stars. What I mean by this is I made a graphic very roughly done of the exact cost to take a hero from 5 stars up to max, which is 13 stars. It'll be on the screen right now. There are two different versions as the rare faction heroes is slightly different. Um, if we take a look at it, you'll notice each star level besides the first ascension from 5 to 6, they require gene potions and the cost increases by a lot very quickly. I won't bore you with this as you can view this image when you want, the link will be in the video description, but the total cost of gene potions for one hero, this is factoring in the uh, initial requirement for gene potions, so the requirement of say like taking the hero from 9 to 10 stars, which is 10,000, but also the food cost of say building a 9 star hero, which is another 10,000. 
So the total cost is around 50,000 gene potions worth of food and 80,000 gene potions worth of requirement cost. This brings the total to about 130,000 gene potions just for one hero. You need to do this uh, if you weren't aware this game consists, uh, oh, actually I can't do campaign. I'm waiting on my account level so let's actually go into Skyscraper just to show you what I mean. This game consists of a lineup of five heroes. You need to do this for your entire lineup so that's going to be 650,000 gene potions. That is a lot, and it's very, very unlikely. I would say almost 100% of fact, the majority of the player base will ever do this. A very, very small percentage of the player base will reach this, if any, based off the shelf life of mobile games nowadays. So as I go back to the point of this discussion, don't spread out your hero stars without giving any thought into it, such as short and long-term usage. Pay attention to the tier lists that have been made for this game. There is one done by Kami and the Idle Survivor Discord in the forum discussion channel, as seen right here, titled A Community Guide, A Work in Progress. And then there's the one I made recently where I did a video about it, thumbnail right here. Also, the image is linked in the video description if you want to look at that later. The reason is, yes, S heroes will be used as food, but early on, you don't want to be starring up just any S heroes, especially beyond six stars, as after that, it requires gene potions. Looking at my tier list right now, as an example, you don't want to star up the C tier heroes beyond 6 star because there is no regression system in this game, there is only reset. If you go into your hero, you can see this little button right here, I've mentioned this a few times in my videos, you can click this and you can reset your heroes at zero cost. The problem is resetting means you get back only the leveling resources used, so like gene potions, banknotes, or XP, but you do not get hero food. Regression means you get back that hero food. Currently, this game does not have that feature. It has been requested numerous times in the Discord. Maybe they will add it, maybe they won't. If you made the mistake of doing so, say you've been leveling up some of the heroes that are in the lower tiers of the tier list. Uh, let's just bring up an example. Uh, let me look at my list here. Uh, where is he? Let's say you leveled up the Guardian, for example. If you made this mistake, you're not lost. Your game isn't over. You do eventually need to make many nine stars as hero food. But I understand if you're free to play, your luck is bad. You only have so much to work with. There's many, many factors such as you want to progress. You want to build up your resonance center. However, bringing heroes that are not long-term usable, say C-tier heroes like this hero right here, beyond 6 stars leaves you in a bad spot. I've seen countless players showing their lineups in the Discord with hero stars spread over so many heroes. Say you leveled up this hero that's not very good to 7 stars. Now you're in a bad spot, like I said, because now you have to take this hero or heroes to 9 stars, as there's only 3 food requirements, 5 star, 6 star, and 9 star which is a lot of gene potions as I showed you in my ascension guide image. Um, you could have left him at 6 stars and focused more on the higher tier heroes instead. Patience is the key to idle games unless you're spending lots of money, which brings me into my last crucial mistake. So the third mistake is going to be chasing leaderboards. And leaderboards are everywhere in any mobile game you play. Um, if we go into, let's say, Warpath right here, I go to Skyscraper Rescue, you can see the ranking at the top right. We have first place, second place, third place. Um, if we go into the faction towers like Bounty Association, first place, second place, third place. You've got campaign, you have arena rankings, you know, first, second, third, of course. And then if you go to the main screen and you click this ranking icon, you can actually see a better organized version instead of going into each individually. You can see you have power rankings for the highest power player on your server. What I have found in mobile games is the negativity in any game I try, it's just really really high in regards to the pay to win versus free to play and low spenders never ending topic. So the mistake I've made is don't chase leaderboards unless you're willing to spend consistently. Leaderboards are a trap, you are competing with loads of players with all different backgrounds of financial status. To me a game is not fun if I constantly feel the need to spend money to make progress whether it's a little or a lot basically making noticeable progress. Play the game if you enjoy it, and play it at your own pace regardless of what others are doing. This is an idle game, meaning you're not meant to spend hours on this game a day. You log in like I do, you do some events, so if we open up the events tab right now, right now there's currently a double the points for summons, which is really good. I do believe this is the first time this event has happened in the game that I'm aware of. Uh, which is basically every time you summon you get double your points towards your pity chest because at 5,000 points you get a guaranteed triple S hero like I have right now. I'm just not going to click it uh, at this very moment. 
Um, you also have some uh, treasure hunt event right here. So I try to go into the event, look at the daily requirements and try to complete as many as I can. Then I go over to my dailies tab. So I open up my little dailies checklist here. I complete all of these. Then I go into campaign if I can progress, which I can't like I showed earlier. I have to wait until my account level is level 129, which if you click on your AFK resource chest, it actually tells you how long it's going to take. As you can see, my level requirement will take one day and 13 hours. So I have to wait one day and 13 hours before I can go further in the campaign. I can also go over to Skyscraper, see if I can push a little further. I can go into Warzone and then Alien Campaign, see if I can push here a little bit. If I can't, then that's it. I'm done, I log out. Idle is the key word, meaning patience is the key unless you spend money. I just don't want new players coming into the Idle Survivor Discord and seeing the spam of this just, this is just another pay to win game. Yes, of course, every single mobile game is pay to win. If you do not like this aspect of mobile games, you're gonna have to go to PC or console. Microtransactions are never going away. I understand there are many things that could be optimized within this game in terms of what's achievable free to play on certain events compared to monetizing it where you need to spend in order to progress. But for the most part, when I compare this to many other idle gacha games I've tested in the last two months, which are a lot, like I'm talking over 30 games, this game, despite its flaws, is on the better side of the spectrum in regards to the balance between pay to win and free to play. I will be coming out with a video with the topic of changes I feel still need to be made very soon, but the reason I wanted to point this out is games are meant to be fun. If the game isn't fun for you, don't play it. You decide how you want to play the game regardless of what updates may happen, what others are doing. If you want to chase leaderboards, be the highest power player on your server, go for it. If you want to just log in, try some summons, save some diamonds, maybe get lucky with some triple S heroes, do a few upgrades, log out, then do that. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.